Let us read Psalm verse 1 together. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone, my steps have well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart to wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walking through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, oh, that's right, okay. Verse 28. Uh-huh. Verse 28. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast told me by my right hand, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me in glory. Who have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. My flesh and my heart felt it, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go abhorring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may be there all my life. Amen. And our focus point, the first focus verse was Psalm 73, verse 2. Uh -huh. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. Uh -huh. My steps had well nigh slipped. Uh -huh. So again, this is the psalmist Asaph. And I'm going to start with the with the distraction of materialism, and then we're just going to go around the room. Okay? Mm -hmm. Some people in North America are in poverty, while others enjoy extreme luxury. Mm -hmm. But on the average, most people live at a comfortable level. Anyone who has traveled around the world has quickly noticed that we live with more prosperity than most of the world. Uh -huh. Two principles, self-reliance and compassion on others during their time of crisis and need, are both deeply rooted in the Bible as well as in our culture. Unfortunately, our society has shifted to extremes. Reliance on others on the one side and little to no compassion for the needy on the other side. Yeah. Now, compared with North Americans 50 years ago, the average person today owns twice as many cars, uh -huh. eats out twice as often, uh -huh. and enjoys endless other commodities that weren't even around back then, uh -huh. such as microwave ovens, SUVs, mobile phones, uh -huh. and recreational equipment. Uh -huh. Is there a rampant quest for material wealth today, causing people to live above their means? Does society equate the acquisition of more goods and wealth with prosperity and happiness? It certainly appears that most marketing strategies are built on this assumption. Uh -huh. Now, compared with their grandparents, today's young adults have grown up with much more affluence, uh -huh. slightly less happiness, yeah. and much greater risk of depression and assorted social pathology. Uh -huh. That notes Hope College psychologist David G. Myers, PhD, author of The Fun, Friends, and Faith of Happy People, uh -huh. which appeared in the American Psychologist, volume 55, number one. Now, our becoming much better off over the last four decades has not been accompanied by one iota of increased subjective well-being. Uh -huh. Wise men of the Bible discovered centuries ago that the things we should value most are not a car, bank account, or even a home. Our greatest treasures are true family, friends, and our relationship with God. So to sum it up, I mean, we got more, but actually we, we got less. Amen. You just come up. Praise the Lord. Did you have the, the, the tennis? Mm -hmm. You don't have that? <laughs> so like I said, we're going to go around the room and start with you. Minister Rodriguez, can you, can you read, start with contemplating the topic? Okay. Psalm 73 traces the struggle and victory of Asa. Asaph, during the time of a severe test of his faith. Like Asaph, we may go through a period when confusing questions plague us, and like Asaph, we 
we will find our answers only when we enter into the praises of our God. For those who came late, uh, we're in Psalm 73. We read, we read verses 1 through 10. You know, our key verse, our focus verse is verse 2. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. And then we skip down to verses 23 to 28 to see what happens in the end with the song is Asaph. So, deep can you, me, um, we're at Searching the Scriptures. Searching the Scriptures. This is Asaph. Mm-hmm. Asaph is God. Ironically, the challenge to Asaph's faith came because he, be- he-, he believed God was, God was good. Had he not believed in the loving server sovereignty of his Lord, he probably could have sloughed off his confusion. He might have th- he might have theor- theorized that the Almighty was indifferent to the needs of his people. Worse, he might have concluded that God was unfaithful to his covenant promise. But Asaph knew God was Israel's God. Psalms five fifty and seven. The psalmist was certain God had chosen the Hebrews and had delivered and had delivered them miraculously. Surely he had real he had read Exodus 20 and 2. I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Unquestionably, he had some he had some with enthusiasm of Jehovah's conquest in the half of his people. Israel. Asaph had been reared to believe the Almighty blesses the righteous and punishes the ungodly. What then was Asaph's problem? Amen. Amen. Thank you, D. Okay. Um, what was his problem? Uh, it seems like his raising. He was raised to serve me. Wow. 
Bibles, can we, uh, thank you for a thing. Can we go to um, <clears throat> Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Can I get, uh, let me see. I'm sorry, sis. What was your name again? Me? Yeah. Huh? Corey. Corey, do, do you have your Bible? Oh. Oh, sorry. Okay, Benjamin Sanders, you got your Bible. Can you read 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 and verse 7? But godliness with content is great gain. For we bought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Amen. Okay, so, Orion, can you continue with our first again? Bless us to read.
um, he's, he just makes a lot of like worldly love music. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, okay, I, I, I got you. And I get, when I get my phone again, I'm not down low. No, nope. it's going to be Marvin Sapp. It's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it works. God is, God is on me. You, you know? know that phone? You just got yes. it. Yes, yes. It's gone. It's gone. I had insurance on it, and they gave me this little cheap loan. So, so God is not, you know, he's not playing. And we have to guard our heart. He's saying, son, you know, you're going to teach the word. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go after her. Yeah. Jessica, you have comments? Um, I'm just saying, like, uh, I was going to say, like, like, according to the article, I think that it's saying that it's not okay that you watch or listen to certain things because there's a lot of subliminal messages. Mm -hmm. Yes, like, I agree. Oh my like lord. That. Yes. And you know, it messes with your subconscious. So you don't know, or you don't think it's <coughs> anything's going wrong, but it's speaking to your subconscious. Gotta preach. You know? yes. And um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something else. You better preach. Like, a lot of shows, like, I like watching, like, reality shows, you know? But mm. it's like, if you watch these things, you'll become desensitized to it and you think it's okay. Right. You know, so you watch shows or, you, you know, that's, you know, teenagers are having sex and, you know, mm -hmm. and you'll think that it's okay, you know, right. you see it on TV. And it, then, so if you see it, like, in real life, then it's going to be like, whatever, like, it's okay, you know? Yeah. And see, what we have to be aware of, one of the greatest teachings that I got from Pastor Wright since I've been here is his teaching on, um, you know, Peter was trying to, he was trying to be hard, he was trying to be a go-getter, and he was like, Lord, you know, I'll die for you, I'll do this, you know. But really what God wanted to say to, to Peter is, can you live for me? Because you see, he said, Peter, the, the Satan desires to sit you like wheat. And what did Pastor say? It's a slow grind. In other words, it's, it's a slow process of what... Stuff like that, you get desensitized. Mm -hmm. Your first is watching it watching on TV. Then it's hearing it. Then that's thing you know, you're thinking crazy. Then that's thing that you, you said something to somebody. Then that's thing you know, you didn't commit a murder. You see what I'm saying? It's a slow, it's, it's, it's something to where, like your leg, he's, sl he's still slowly riding your leg, and the, the damage is permanent. And by the time you notice that you got a, your leg is missing, you see what I'm saying? It's a slow grind. That's what that shit you like weakening. I'm glad that Pastor pointed that out because you, you go over to Song of Solomon, yeah. you know, chapter 2, verse 15. It says, matter of fact, can we go back in our Bibles, please? Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. It says, uh, take unto us the little foxes, the small foxes that destroy the vines, because our vines have tender grapes. What is, what is he symbolically saying? See, we look out for the big sins, but Satan is sitting us like wheat. It's that little stuff that we're letting slip in to our minds on TV, on the radio, on the internet. The small pots that destroy the vine. Why? A uh, small pot knows away at the vine so that the food can flow down. A big pot you can spot. It's big enough to reach up and bite the food. Everybody follow me? Yes, sir. We got a hand in the back. Same thing? Uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15. So it's, it's all, it all ties in with, you know, Satan, you know, <clears throat> Peter's talking about, I'm not for you enough. Can you live for me? Can you guard your heart? Can you be an ambassador for Christ? Can you live in this generation, this land seen period, this church that we're in, this lackadaisical, you know, lukewarm church, but yet still be so loud when you come back. Amen? Amen? So can we pick up what we're reading? Yeah. Number three. He was short-sighted. We need to see beyond the glamour and glitter of the present world. What appears to be success may not be success at all. What seems to be prosperity may actually be the poverty of the soul. Further, it is impossible to evaluate fully the inner turmoil suffered by those who appear to be successful. Yeah, 